Welcome to the Jacob B. and Joe MC Show. How you doing, Mr. Joe? I'm doing fantastic, JB. How are you? I'm doing good, Bob. We're going to go around the room like we do every week. We're broadcasting live from Sherlock, Sherlock Hut, the 183. We're going to go around the room, and introduce everybody, let them get a couple shout-outs for their business. We'll go ahead and start with ladies first. We'll go to this side of the room. All right. Hey, I'm Carolina Stone. And um, this crazy mercurial rolling stone rolling in and out of town and parts of town. And I'm excited to be here and explore all this great interconnectedness that we share and um, get these conversations that matter out there. I like it. All right, moving on to David. We got the finger. Keep it clean, David, please. Keep it clean? All right, I can do that. Today, today I want to remind you that on April 29th, we have Eeyore's birthday. He's 54 this year. <coughs> Come out and enjoy the wild side, the keeping Austin weird. Here we go. And as far as what I'm promoting right now is theforbiddenfruit.info. Go look. Go look if you, if you dare. All right, Mr. Jones. <laughs> dare you to go look. <laughs> dare you to go look. All right. Who are you, Mr. Joe? What's hey. going on with you? <clears throat> I am Joe McCoslin, and uh, my company is Military Vets. What I do is I help vets all across the country. Uh, whatever they need, as long as it's not illegal or immoral, I'm there for my vets. All right. Mr. Michael. Hi, I'm Michael Bowles, and I bring happiness and joy into people's lives. And I do that simply by being myself as a wedding officiant, making people happy together forever after. Mm -hmm. I like. on that. All right. And we the Happiness Academy. Today we are doing the podcast, but one of the number one questions in the podcast is, Jacob, what happened to your eye? Well, I know everybody's asking that, so I figured I'd just go ahead and address the situation because everybody can see me on the radio. Um, there's a burning building. There's a kid inside. I saved the kid. I saved the baby. That's the good news. I ran out, delivered him to his mom, and he started crying because he didn't have his pacifier. So I was like, I better go back in. So I went back in the burning building, started to come down, collapsed on me, a little spark hit my eye, and that's what happened. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I was actually changing uh, uh, the tip on the paint gun because it got clogged last night. Oh. And it had pressure on it. And sometimes when you have those lines, it kind of like want to like go their own direction. And, Tap the trigger a little bit and, and spray it in my eye. Oh. So that's what happened. All right, we have a new visitor. <clears throat> Want to go ahead and introduce yourself real quick? Oh, Desiree, Workscape Designs. Hi. Workscape. How can they find you, Desiree? Uh, we're a commercial contract office furniture dealer in Round Rock, Texas, off of Joe DiMaggio Boulevard. All right. So what we're going to do this week is talk business like we do every week. Come here and try to help you guys out how to figure out and maximize, optimize your business. So I can start talking about a subject or we could keep it open to things that are specific for you guys to help you get a better grasp of what you guys should be doing. And I think Mr. Michael here may have a question. You're very perceptive. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce my little pal here. This is Teddy. Hey, Daddy. Hey. And I am in charge of babysitting him for a, a week. Oh. All right. And it is ongoing. This is the most active he's been. So I, I told him about the meeting. And All right. I'm excited. Oh, yeah. 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 Where, where is he from? Uh, he's from Wimberley. Came all the way down from Wimberley for the show, you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ooh, I think that's our second part of this. Where is our other one, Joe? Uh, Wells or something like that? Norway. 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 Yeah, that's yeah, right. Norway. Norway. Oh. No way. Norway? No way. All right. I do have a question. It, it's business related to me. All right. That's what we like to talk I'm about. I'm going to admit before God and all this company here that in a weak moment online three days ago, a little thing popped up and it said smutty.com. Smutty.com. As a minister, I am always interested in getting rid of smut. And so I clicked on it. I saw what it was about. I will not tell you. You can only imagine. And I clicked back off. Did you call the number? 
No. Joe, what was your only warning? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, it wasn't that. It was, it was just, it was just a website. All right. And I went to it, and it was true to its name, a lot of smut. Yeah. And I, I know that some of you probably really, they, oh, smutty.com. As we're talking about smut, <laughs> they've been uh, passing out a card. All right. Your card. Oh, 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 all right. Okay. I got new Sorry. Ones. Sorry. Here's the problem. Uh, it won't go away. It has leached onto my system. Just go, let Google how to reset it. I went to Safari people, and they're the Apple, and they, we spent two and a half hours on it. It is still there. All right, well, there's a couple things. You can try the simple things as clearing your cookies, it may work, just because it may have the cookies attached to it, but um, you may have a virus. So you may, if you don't have an antivirus software or something, you may need to put something or install something yeah, we, in there. We've done a whole lot of stuff, and I'm supposed to get back to them tomorrow. But Michael, Clay, Clay, can, uh, no. All right. This thing is attached. You know, generally what you do on an Apple is you go to preferences, you go to uh, uh, cookies and stuff, and you delete all of them. Or leave them, whatever you yeah. like. I always delete at the end of the day. Yeah. And there it it popped back in. And now I've got now what do you mean? It's popping up I on the search engine more. on your social site? What no, no, it? this is just on my just on my computer site. Is it po is it popping up a pop up box? No. The only thing that comes up I know it's in my machine. How do you know that? It says it is. Well what you could do it like uh, like it's recently it's installed it's in cookies box. And the part that says if you delete this, you may lose all kinds of things. I never lost anything by deleting. But did you shut your computer down? Oh uh, yes. What you can do is shut your computer down, and but don't shut it down normally. Just just say hard stop. Yeah, hard stop. Throw it delete, out the freeway. All delete, right? And then when it comes back, right, it'll say, you know, your computer shut down. You know, didn't shut down the right way or whatever, and all this. Open it up in safe mode. Okay. So the last thing you want to restore. Oh, you know what? You may be able to just ask Joyce's son to come over and help. You. There you now go. Now he's he's got strip for uh, oh. something. Well, do you need it today? He doesn't I mean, need it's it today. already stripped me of all of my information. If, it, if that's what it's going to do. Yeah, I don't know. There's probably a simpler solution, but uh, there is. I was just surprised when Safari, and I thought, boy, I'm going have a meeting on Tuesday with some of the brightest minds in Austin. Yeah, well, you know that, huh? If, yeah. if you remember a couple of weeks ago, when my never ever yes. comment, <laughs> right? I keep never ever, on. if you see something pop up and it says, oh, your computer's infected. And oh, I know that one. Call this yeah. number. Well, I'll, I'll just tell you a quick, uh, a nice little gesture. is like, if you don't recognize the site, it's not something that you're searching for. If it's something that pops up and they usually pop something up that's going to grab your attention. Now, sometimes it's based off of somewhere else you've gone, but sometimes it just randomly pops up too. So, but any pop-up is usually I just avoid it. It's well, just, that would be my inclination now. Yeah. It was not the other day. Yeah. I, I don't understand that the, you said you talked to the Safari people. Uh-huh. So I assume these are the experts in the browser. I would make that assumption. Well, all right. Well, Safari is a browser. They were very browser. nice. I went to yeah, uh, the original guy, his supervisor, then her supervisor. What you need to do is talk to, what type of computer what is it, a Mac? A Macintosh, yeah. You need to talk to like a Mac guy or Call something. Call the Mac. Safari is yeah. like just a browser. There's like Chrome, no, Safari, Internet. Well, no, no, it, it's, it's the Apple people. All right. And Apple owns Safari. Yeah, but, all right. No, I mean, I went to Apple Help. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, we'll help you with that. We're Safari also. Usually, I'll just let you know. You get, I mean, I can do this, and I was thinking doing that this afternoon. Was call back, and I get somebody else. And talk well, over again. you can always so, take yeah. it down to Best Buy. There has buy to be something <laughs> that will go in there and remove it. Well, so I had a similar situation, and what ended up working for me was kind of like what Joe is suggesting, that you have to reboot your computer in safe mode. 
But I don't my, know what but, safe mode means. Yeah, but my antivirus program kicked in and was able to detect the virus and quarantine. Go at it. Yeah. Now, Michael, let me just verify something real quick. You were talking to us a couple weeks ago and said you have just got a brand new computer. Yes, it is. Is this mm -hmm. a brand new computer? Yes. Now, it's probably under some type of warranty. You can probably just take it back to the place, mm -hmm. and they'll probably just fix it all for free. But seeing that it's a new computer and it doesn't have years' worth of stuff stored on it, there's usually a, you can probably oh, just Oh, I know, I glanced at everything over for you. You can probably just YouTube it, and then you can probably find a video to show you how to reset your factory resets of this type of computer. Usually a little button you hold for about 30 seconds, boom, back to new. What will it do to the information that's on there? Well, it depends how much you have. Like, what do you mean? If you're, if you're I, got, I, I transfer everything from the old computer to the new computer. If you're storing any passwords or, like, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, know, type it in. My entire life it. is on there. In I, fact, I, Mike, th this is the one thing I suggest, and then I want to try to get more into marketing. Move on. But I, I suggest probably just paying, like, 50 or 60 bucks yeah. and taking it to Best Buy and having some service geek or geek squad do it. Just because. Then you know it's taken care of, it's yeah. safe, it's just done. There are actually some guys that I break, you fix. I don't know, but I happened upon them and they're just like mom and pop kind of shop and they're cool. Yes, which I will follow through on, but nobody has magic computer. Help. But you just probably want to get some antivirus software and install I, it. You know, that's the thing. I did have it. You did? And I, I do. I, I'm fully protected America. All right, so then the second thing is just avoid those things. Also, the things which say, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. you're the thousand, you're the millionth person, you just want a thousand dollars, get a Home Depot. They'll make you go through stuff. Like, it's all just a marketing. You go through stuff and eventually, they're gonna make you give so much information. You're gonna stop giving information, so you don't. You're not gonna get that prize. Yeah. Because by the time I give, get you to fill out enough of these forms to get that actual prize, I'm gonna have your card, yeah. social security number, your credit card number, your maiden name. I tried one. Go after that low hanging fruit, and it's well, like you know the guys around the corner kind of thing. Another thing you have to watch out for is when you when you Google the company that you want to you know help help you. You got to make sure that that's an authorized. Oh yeah, I, I just use the big names. You know what I'm saying? Wait, you know, look for their logo and, and yeah. look down the bottom where it says copyrighted and all right. that. They're so they're insidious. I mean, they, they're finding us all oh, over yeah. the place these yeah. days. I mean, it's like even with their map. But if you guys haven't heard, I mean, not to cut you off, but if you guys haven't heard, it's even going to be getting worse because now they're saying that the providers who provide you internet or your service can start tracking your information and selling your information, social mm -hmm. security numbers, anything that they collect off of it. Let me, let me tell you how bad it was. The other day, I was on a .gov, G-O-V site, mm -hmm. and they wrote the article, and you know how they put the little highlights in there where you can click on that for more information? So I saw this, and it said something about a... Uh, uh, the spreadsheet for the benefits, and I said, "Oh, that'd be cool, you know. Let me check it out." I clicked on that, and all of a sudden, you know, your computer got virus. Don't do anything. Don't shut it down. And all this stuff. So I mean, the DOV site somehow or another, they're getting in between that and having that thing pop up. Yeah. Well, there's little black boxes that pop up on the screen. Does that mean someone's in there? Like, it depends. Sometimes you just have a thing that's saying you need to update your antivirus. Sometimes you need to do this. I just be careful anything you guys do um, online, even emails, if they're not for people you know, don't download, don't open stuff. Yeah, don't open your spam for sure. No, you know, no, no, um, no, just click it out. Even things that sound good, you just have to be careful in you know, anything you do, but I'd rather start talking more marketing sales. Mm -hmm. There's uh, definitely some type of reputation management you guys should do for your business and for yourselves, which should set up, you know, the easy thing to do is set up a Google alert for you guys' business or name, a Google Alert's gonna, you know, just send you a notification if anything populates, you know, online about your name or your business, just so you can kind of monitor that. But you can also go set up Google Alerts not just to monitor your reputation and try to protect your reputation, but you can set up a Google Alert to notify you guys about a subject or topic or anything going on in the industry. So maybe you want to start posting stuff into your social media feeds. Maybe you're trying to figure out, hey, what are the people talking about free speech? What are they talking about nowadays? Or what are they doing? Set up a Google Alert every day, every hour, as it happens. Whatever you set that up as, it's going to notify you and tell you what the people are talking about, what the people are liking. But just to tell you guys the truth, 
Google Alerts is also, it doesn't go grab like the oldest stuff. Like you could set it as, as it happens. So it's like the newest mm -hmm. article published or the newest thing coming out or the newest whatever. So What's it's not trending? just something, What's yeah, trending? it's trending. Not only is it trending, but it's new. So that's what they're mm -hmm. talking about. That's what they're liking. So sometimes you try to think, hey, Maybe it's weddings in Austin. What should I be talking about when I need a post for my Facebook or my social media? What should I be creating when I'm creating a YouTube or a video? Well, maybe setting up these Google Alerts will help you realize, oh, look, this is what people are already talking about today. If they're already talking about um, us bombing Syria or doing something and I can tie it in with what I'm doing, it's kind of already trending, it's kind of already out there, it already ties it in. Now my titles, my tags, my descriptions, if I just add a little something that kind of ties that together, now it's actually got more people's more I mean, t attention a little bit more than normal or than the basics because it's kind of popping out. It's things that everybody else is talking about. Somebody else already kind of, that's what we're talking about a lot of times when we say bypassing those points of engagement. They say it takes between five to eight points of engagement before the day's trust, before the day, day of purchase, before the day they decide to do business with you, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. There's those five to eight points of engagement. But if I'm talking about something that's trending, and there's ABC, NBC, Fox, there's all these radio stations, every broadcaster, news reporter, everybody's talking about the same exact thing, guess what? I don't have to try to bypass those points of engagement. They're mm -hmm. already there. So if I can make my thing mm -hmm. relevant to it, mm -hmm. then I make myself mm -hmm. relevant to what mm -hmm. people are already searching for, what they're looking for. And if I already know that something happened, let's just say bombing is Syria, well, if I already know that, and then somebody had told me that, because my wife told me, oh my gosh, we just bombed Syria. She told me that over the weekend. I was like, what? First thing I did is go to my phone and start searching that, too. Like, you know, I want to find something for myself. I want to just go look at her Facebook feed and be like, oh yeah, take it for, you know, whatever mm -hmm, that is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I want to go find something on my own. I tell people a lot of times, example, with the phone or the phone case, if I was talking about a blue phone case, which is, this isn't blue, it said it did all this cool, fantastic stuff, if it did Bluetooth, solar panel, did all this, the chances are, when you guys went home, if you saw a little phone panel pop up, or a phone case that kind of looked like this is blue, and we were talking about that today, the chances are you guys would probably click on it. Those are bypassing those points of engagement. That's what you guys want to start thinking about when you're doing your marketing and when you're setting up your campaign, or even when you're talking to somebody. How can you bypass those points of engagement? But now think about it. There's studies that say out there, if you try to pitch your business or your stuff, like try to sell them but, uh, like between the first and fourth point of it or third point of engagement, your chance of selling or closing that sale is like a 0.05%. To where if you wait between like the fourth and eighth point or the fifth and eighth point of engagement, your closing ratio is gonna go up to 70, 80%, maybe even 90%. So you have a lot better chance. So what are some of the things we could do? I always say, hey, mm -hmm. there's pitch. I mean, you have the, um, what is it? Uh, discovery, report, or pitch. So that's usually the order. That's kind of how I learned it. Hey, discovery, report, or pitch. But most people think discovery, report, or pitch. Report, or pitch. What's some discovery I could do real quick? So I don't want to pitch my business when I first meet somebody until I have at least four to six points, I mean, uh, three to four points of engagement.
I like your purse, I like your hat. I had, honestly, like, from where I am now to where the bar is, that's the front desk, they come over to us, and that's the amount of time that I have to read this person before I have to start pitching mm -hmm. this person. So I have 10 seconds, 5 seconds, 30 seconds, sometimes a minute, sometimes a half hour, sometimes they're just slow and just take their time. But I had that amount of time to read that person and find one thing, sports shirt that they had, a wedding ring. He looked tired. Mm -hmm. uh, he looked like a businessman. He looked professional. He looked something. It didn't matter. Women, shoes, purses, hair, those are always of the color of that shirt, something like that. Your hair looks great, anything like that. They'll hold on to that. They love it. <laughs> you're talking about when you're out and you're meeting with folks out in the real world. All right, let's so. talk about real world, but all you have to do is think about how can I translate that into online. So exactly. some of it's like engagement on Facebook. So sometimes it's liking their posts, sharing their posts, commenting on posts, because that all pops up, but there's also systems to that. But that's a little bit different. Let's talk about the... The, we're here getting those points of engagement. You're, you're making that you're making the engagement more memorable because you've made it personal. There's a story attached to it. They're so going to remember you. So they you said something, yeah. and you're trying to hit those trigger points, which are emotions for them. So, but you have to, you know, go different ways. Like, <clears throat> kind of lean the the chair, I may say something and recognize that you're tired. So I may not keep complimenting you because if you're tired and you're not, you don't feel good and you just may just not want to So I may just be a little bit more serious and match kind of your, your attitude. So if you're feeling like serious or tired or something, maybe I'm going to be like, you know, I understand that you're tired, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's been a long week, whatever, whatever. We've had this, we've had that, whatever it is. So I'm going to try to relate to them. But then I'm going to get to those points of engagement to where they're engaging with me. They're talking to me. They're asking me for stuff. But then you have to start thinking, you know, as salespeople, we have to be farmers. We have to be hunters. We have to be fishers, right? So you have to start thinking about planting these seeds to where you want to go with each relationship, too. So as I'm talking to you, it may start as Joe has a great shirt. You have beautiful hair. Michael, you're just an amazing person and with an awesome dog. I'll buy it. All right, so they start with that, but we also have to think about the seeds that we want to start planting and dropping to them for the directions that we want to go. But sometimes just because I want to sell you doesn't mean that's the only path that I have to go. It may not be the right time to sell Michael or Joe or somebody. So, and just in time share, like our bosses and stuff wanted us to pitch them right there when they were coming in. But I'll tell you the truth, I was successful when I realized, hey, Maybe it's better to pitch them a little bit later on or tomorrow, even though we weren't supposed to do that because then there's a chance that they'll get away and all this other stuff. But all I did is make sure that I had something to also bring them back to me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't just go pitch and say, hey, here's a, you know, just come back tomorrow and hopefully you guys come back and see me and hopefully I get you guys to go back in the tour. Mm -hmm. No, if I knew that they weren't feeling right, hey, I know you guys just came in. Um, Look, we have these little travel guides. They put your picture right here. Let me go take your picture, and I'll have it ready for you guys tomorrow morning. Just come get it for me, and I'll plan your whole schedule, help you plan your day, all that stuff. Boom. They'd be like, all right, perfect. So then I'd give them a reason to come back. Then they'd also be telling me what they're doing all day. What's your guys' plans? Oh, we're going to Disneyland. Perfect. Do you guys already have tickets? So I'm already dropping the seeds of where I want them to go. Do you guys already have tickets? No, we don't have tickets. Let me go ahead and buy you the tickets. Go ahead, mm -hmm. go in here for 45 mm -hmm. minutes to an hour, maybe three hours or six hours, depending on how they keep you back there. But hey, we'll get you back there. After you're mm -hmm. done, you come back see me. I'll have you these tickets. I'll have your you know, transportation set up. You can go on the coaster. You can do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Boom. I was already planting all the seeds from the point mm -hmm. when I said, hey, I love that shirt. I love your hair. I was just doing discovery to see what things you're going to give me to talk to you about. What, are you, what, what clues are you going to draw me? What things are you going to tell me about you? <clears throat> Where are you coming from today, Mr. Michael? Wimberley. Great. How was the drive? It was blah, blah, blah. I'm just doing my discovery right there. That's all well, I'm doing. Also, we're also connecting, and we're, we're finding something we have in common. Exactly. Uh -huh. Just your attitude that we have in common. That'll work. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes I just had to create stuff. I had to make it fun or exciting. I could tell that, hey, we walked in, it's blah, blah, blah. And I'd throw in something to see if they reacted. If they reacted positive to it, I'd kind of keep going with it a little bit. If they didn't react so positive, I'd be like, yeah, I understand, totally. And just go a different direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you guys have to be universal, too. I see too mm -hmm. many salespeople, they have to pitch the sale. It's just like, no matter what, I have to pitch the sale. It has to be a close. Close, close, close. It's not always a close. 
It's about doing your discovery, about figuring out, <coughs> figuring out you know, who your target audience is, the best way to approach them. And then also, I tell you guys that all the time, that's why even starting out with the Google Alert, if it's gonna bring in the top thing for the Google Alert which pop populating them, it could be a video, it could be a news article, it could be an image, it could be a whatever it is. That starts giving you guys, without doing a whole bunch of like research and all this, an uh, image or a picture of what you guys should be or who you should be talking to also, or what the people are looking for. Mark could be as a new sales manager and he's like wanting us to do cold calls, 50 of them on the phone. So basically, we're already in the pitch mode. You're pitching immediately because you're cold calling about your business. He wants to it listen. It doesn't matter. I came in there and they come to me and that's cold. It wasn't mm -hmm. like I knew them. It wasn't like they wanted to come see me. It wasn't like they wanted to come talk to me or go in the back. That's so just as cold as it was. So you're on the phone and you're pitching. Same yeah, process. It, 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 it's Same totally. Concept? Okay. Yeah. Oh, honey, you sound so sweet. Just, you're so nice. You're so awesome. Start complimenting them. Okay. You start saying something that gets them to talk to you because the whole thing is, if they're not mm -hmm. talking to you, what are they trying to do? They're trying to hang up on you, right? <laughs> you got them talking to you. You're doing good. Who cares what you're saying? You just keep throwing it out there and seeing what happens. That's all it is. Because all, all you're doing is testing. And to tell you the truth, this is the thing you have to keep in your mindset, too, is when I was doing timeshare or when I was at another thing, I had nothing to do with timeshare. I was bettering myself to become the best marketer I could be to open up my own marketing company. Mm -hmm, That's what mm -hmm, I was doing right mm -hmm, then and there. Mm -hmm. So when Discovery. you're pitching somebody, <laughs> right. even if it isn't the right demographic or you don't close it, all you're doing is practicing to close the next person to become better at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So all you want to do is try to practice and say, hey, you know what? Throw something out there. See if it works. Who cares? You have to do so many cold calls. If something doesn't work and it's wild and crazy, guess what? They're going to hang up on you anyway. <clears throat> you could also take about five minutes to do, if you're calling commercial, take about five minutes of research to pick out something to where you're not a salesperson you're saying, hey, you know, I saw you last quarter, you guys are doing really great. You know, why yeah. Well, I mean if they're doing really well. So I mean oh, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's great. Yeah, that's, so there's that, so much new technology out answer. there. I'm gonna teach you tell you the hottest new method and the most effective for you, your time and your company, and your guy could just give you a bonus and he can thank you later. But it's called I think he knows it's called ringless ringless voicemail. Ringless boom. Voicemail. Yep. And you can send the same message out to all those numbers that he wants you to cold call. It automatically puts it in their voicemail without calling their phone. You leave this nice flat message that's the same to everybody. And guess what? The people that are interested, guess what they do? They call you back. They call you back. Boom. Not wasting time, not calling all those places. And the amount of time that it would take you to leave those messages and call those hundred numbers, right. you could do in five minutes or less. You could do it with a thousand numbers in five minutes or less. Think about it if you could hit a hundred thousand people in a week and leave them, or in a day, and leave them a voicemail. That's a lot. Of I don't know if you could get that many numbers, but hey. Other people, this other guy that I work with, he doesn't leave anything. He just hangs up. I'm like, I always leave voicemail. Yeah. Not, not yeah, no, no, but everybody wins in that equation. You know what I mean? Even the person who's getting the call, because that goes directly to. You know, cause, I mean, people are texting, people are calling, you know, yeah, I mean, I just moved across call, country, so it's like, I didn't need to Right, exactly. Okay, one thing that always works, when people call me, is they they're excited. Right. Yeah, so you energy. can see your voice. And one of the things I had for years, right above my phone, was a smiley face to remind me to smile uh -huh. when I talk to them. One of the times here that worked out, great. they put uh, stickers on the front of the phones and computers that said, I like you. So you always had to think, I like you, no matter what. Yeah. No matter what, you always Absolutely. have to think Absolutely. But a lot of it is, you just have to create that experience of what you want people to feel and think and how you want them to be. So if I call up and, hey, I sound hesitant about selling them a product, do you think they're going to feel, like, confident buying a product from us? Do you think if I sound like, uh, uh, hey, this is Jacob, you think they're really going to want to buy furniture from me? But if I say, hey, how you doing? Dude, I'll just tell you, sometimes just the sound of your voice or your energy, people just want to talk to you. They're like, I want that energy. I don't care yeah. what I have to do. I want to be around Joe because he has that energy, and I need that because it's just changes my whole day. 
whatever it is. So sometimes just creating it, even if it's out of your comfort zone, just trying something, creating it. I'll tell you the truth. I wasn't successful in timeshare until I went way out of my comfort zone. Way out of my comfort zone. I mean, I wore wigs to freaking like things that said super fly, lots of all things that were fly. <laughs> Doing crazy stuff. I had I created my own list of my top five. Well, I had five top five things to do in San Diego and top ten things to do. So if there's nobody else in line, I pull out the top ten if I knew they had time to waste. If they had to had to go quick, I just do my top five. But it's just creating experience. But not everybody would get that. I'd take it. When I have like different flyers and different stuff for different people, I choose it all. And depending on how they'd act when I first in it and like you know interact with them, it's based off of what I would go and what I create. I wouldn't just go off of hey. This is my script. This is the same thing the person next to me is saying. I'm telling you, I've worked it too. I worked it hard. Like I wasn't just making money from timeshare. Every company in town was giving me a kickback, like free food and here, come check out our place. Oh, do you want to go to Legoland, Disneyland tickets, SeaWorld tickets? I mean, everybody's just giving you stuff because I'm referring so many people to me. Is that old good, good old kind of bar a cup of sugar kind of trust? Uh, you know, no, seriously. Something like that. Slip you the you old know, yeah, I help you, you help me, and it goes around. Yeah, sure. comes back around. Well, I think there's two things you can assume in timeshare: that the people are coming for the free gifts, and that they're predisposed. That they're not going to buy. Yeah, that's the two things that are common and, and constant. But there's also like strategies like I yeah. don't care like what industry you're in mm -hmm. there's strategies that the successful people are using even if they don't know that they're using it. Yeah. You just have to figure that out. Like even no matter what it is, you know, there's like even with my wife, she's getting her real estate license, so I've been helping her with strategies. But I've been saying so I have a whole like list of investors. I already have tons of leads already coming in. I have a whole line of investors, so any house that she gets we pretty much flip like that. Any house that we don't think that's going to flip on the market right away, we pretty much have other listing agents that we work with that we put it with them that I pretty much just work on a marketing deal with them so we still make our commission. But we already have it, so strategically, no listing will stand on M, uh, the MLS or whatever for more than like two, three days. We don't want anything to because I want to mm -hmm. break records. My goal is to put them on, like do all the marketing like two, three weeks before we even put it on the MLS just so it never even hits that, then she could say, hey, I never hit anything on the MLS, my average house time is this, and I flip more houses than anybody else in mm -hmm. town. But those are all number of things that you have to start thinking about, which nobody else is caring about or thinking about or doing anything else, but she's going to go work for one of the bigger brokers in town, and I want her just to blow everybody else's records out the water. So I just look at what everybody else is doing, then I start setting up for this. We just come up with a quick strategy, and that's all it is. I know in timeshare, one of the top sales lady that we had in her thing, She'd go find all the new people, and this was her strategy, is, hey, I'll teach you my strategy because I'm the top salesperson. You had to sign a contract with me for six months and pretty much give me every one of your sales that you get and every sale that I'm not about to get, it goes on your record. They say, all right. But that was the strategy is in itself. That's how her records and her numbers were so high because she had people to take their sales and throw her non-sales at them. And her numbers were always top numbers. But what's your guys' strategy for what you guys are doing with your business? Also, how are you going to utilize that to optimize what you're doing and be, be most effective with what you guys are doing? doesn't matter if it's a movie, a business, if it's the forbidden fruit or, you know, creating your comedy series. It's all kind of the same thing. It's all marketing at the end of the day. And it's all a strategy of how can we get there? How can I utilize my, you know, my show or my format to get to where I want? Because we have to build, we're, we're entrepreneurs, we're smaller individuals. We're independent. We're not these big, huge corporations. The odds are against us. They say we well, have we also don't come with that overhead either, so that's a big exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah. So how can we utilize what we have to start getting to where we want? That's where it's all its all stepping mm -hmm. stone. Mm -hmm. I know you want to make a documentary, but at the same time, you know, I think maybe starting with the podcast and working your way up, it helps build. Also, just as far as the equipment, time, and everything, I can do a podcast right now. Once we're done with this, boom, it's published. When I start doing video, I have to do my video editing. I have to do my sound editing. I can do some other stuff. Yeah, I can do some of that with my audio, but at the end of the day, it's still just my audio I'm editing. 
anybody could go edit audio. There's free edit, you know audio editing software out there. Um, there's you know I think Mac has its own audio you know audio editing software stock. So there's tons of stuff you guys can get out there. It's just you know where do you want to start? How do you want to do it? What's your guys' plan? What's your vision of where you want to go? And I want to go for the straight top. I'd start. Hey, how can I work my way up? What's a smaller version of the big vision of what you want? That could be a podcast. It may not even be a podcast. Maybe just trying to get in a comedy club and doing a couple, you know, stand up comedy acts or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe just, hey, yeah. whatever it is, just posting a couple times on Facebook and seeing how it goes or not clicking those things next time and seeing what happens. Or <laughs> Okay. <laughs> next time. Yeah. But. Any other things, comments, questions on this stuff? Uh, you mentioned uh, something called green list voicemail, and I would imagine, like all things alike, there's a cost involved because they're they fairly inexpensive. You get it for about one or two cents per voicemail you leave. Okay. Is a ring list? Ring list. Ring list. Ring list. You can put as many numbers as you want. Ring list. Ring list. R I N G L E S. Yeah. Right, less. So it doesn't. We're really actually creating one in our CRM. So it doesn't do it. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make a noise. 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 Does is that and the customer would be paying like a about a fifteen hundred dollar per month subscription for right. the maintenance yeah, and support. So we're having an internal debate about whether cold calling is the best way to sell this, or do we need to just hire independent contractors that develop relationships over time? It's it's gonna it's, it's all part of your model. Um, I like to do a hybrid of things, but I don't think it's all just about cold calling, setting up the right marketing campaign. Because if, if I set up enough campaigns, like set my website right, maybe do some video marketing, content marketing, stuff like that, I eventually start getting organic uh, rankings or whatever traffic that I don't have to pay for. Nice mm -hmm. thing about my organic traffic is, say somebody clicks it, like a video or something, and it's, I'm not paying for it to go up there, Every time they click that, uh, it just helps it rank higher. Mm -hmm. To where if I pay, eventually every time somebody clicks that, it's going to run out of a budget and it's going to stop. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go down somewhere. So I think setting up you know, um, organic campaigns and setting up your website, setting up your stuff properly there, with the combination of maybe cold calls, but also like uh, maybe like, I don't know what industry it's in, but maybe like even trade shows to start generating leads from. Mm -hmm. So you go to like some trade shows, it depends on the product or service. Maybe you could do some radio or TV, but it seems like a higher end product, so you probably want to do as much radio or TV. That seems for more like a lower cultivating lower relationships. Price. Yeah, to get lower that price yeah. levels. Um, but I like to build like always like to build like affiliate or partner programs and everything. So what I do is I have my own like internal sales team, which is pretty good. But then like I have like kind of just kind of like commission based or driven. People, sometimes we may give them boost or something, but a lot of it's commission-based or performance-based, so they go out, and that's even how I get paid in like a lot of the times here. So I look, work with a lot of the, uh, I create the software, the technology, these subcontractors for like Wyndham's and all of them will go out, they'll use it, but they get a lot, of, they get paid based off of like the leads and performance and stuff that we do. So they generate X amount of leads, then we have to pretty much run those through the system, as long as none of those are duplicates or they haven't already had them, then boom, we get paid for all of those. So we uh, <clears throat> decided to create a, what we call an independent contractor sales force. Mm -hmm. and we put uh, an agreement in place where if somebody just get us an initial meeting mm -hmm. and we close in the deal later, they get $5,000. And people are not, not biting into it. So I'm kind of wondering what's the problem. Uh, I don't know what you're selling. But, but this is a software product. You have a software product. Yeah, software service. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. But, okay, and you're going, your sales team is focusing on people who would use that product. Well, right now we're deciding on a strategy to do the sales. Yeah. Uh, I like where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, me too, because 
exactly. Th th that's really what I was trying to say about Randall was, was that he, it's it's um, combining those paired opposites that you know you, you feel very definitive roles and, and that coming together. So, so like for instance, I'm not a closer. I could connect you to people, and if you can step in and close that deal, then we've got a sale. You know, and, and, and so there's a time for me to get, and so finding somebody who fills that je ne sais quoi, well, whatever you, it is, that white that aspect, like, right? this is how you explain it to me. These would be my concerns, and I guarantee these are the same concerns with everybody, because I try millions of different things, is how do I know that you're closing? I'm just saying, I bring you this lead. How do I know that you closed them or not? How do I know that you didn't close them, you just didn't tell me? How do I know, like, any of that? So it's kind of hard, you know, 5,000 is great, and if I'm in that industry, it's, you know, it's good, and if I know that person really good, they could tell me yes or no, but if I'm just connecting you with somebody and I'm doing this work and I don't really, can't track that lead all the way through, so people try to tell me that all the time. So, oh, you just generate leads for us, and then we'll close it, we'll do this, and we'll pay you. I'm like, yeah, how am I supposed to, if I'm not, like, closing and doing the whole right. process, I can't follow through and see if they're closing or not. If I don't know if they're closing, I'd rather not. If you want to pay me to do the marketing, you guys can handle all the sales. That's absolutely fine with me. But that's a different thing because I'll do the, all the marketing, which I'll still monitor what you guys are doing. But at the end of the day, if your salespeople are messing it up or they're not closing or they're dropping the ball or something or not following up with the people, then it really doesn't affect me because all I'm doing is generating leads. Well, when you mentioned sometimes you use boosts, like what what does that look like? What What is that? Well, boost, it depends, like, I guess, like, what, what campaign you're running. So a booster could be, like, anything, but um, sometimes I want to boost my organic. So I do, like, a, say, for example, I just put a new website up. I wanted to get to the top of Google. So what I'll do is I'll do some videos. I'll do my local. I'll do my organic content. And the things are closing and all that kind of stuff but you know like for instance I have a tendency to just give it all away and not you know and 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 what I've learned to do is step back and really commodi you know, compartmentalize and, and, and see how much I give somebody yeah. you know but because otherwise I gotta you know I gotta fill that tank back up yeah. you know so um, keep grace in the wheel um, so how but when you're starting out and you don't have a prospectus, you don't really know how well this stuff is going to play, but you know that you've got the connections to, to offer them. How do you evaluate that? How, how do you attach a value? How do you equate the value of that? Well, it's kind of hard to put. Like if, 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 were, if your values for, it's going to be different with every person. Yours may be worth a million dollars at one